Good evening. You're listening to Patriot Heart Radio, part of the Dangerous Grounds Network. I'm your host, veteran and author, Doc Collins, bringing you Patriot Heart Radio. Folks, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, This week, we're going to walk through Chapter 10 of the upcoming novel, 1300 Hours. Dangerous Grounds Network has introduced Patriot Heart Radio to present the the behind-the-scenes POV of an upcoming novel, the first of a five-book series that's really, truly a love letter to the veteran and mill spouse community. So we want to send a few shout-outs to the Noble South Restaurant in Mobile, located at 203 Dauphin Street in Mobile, Alabama. Also, Firehouse Wine Bar. You can look them up online, www.firehousewinebar, all spelled out, dot com. They are at 216 St. Francis Street, also in Mobile, Alabama. I want to give a special shout out to Combat Flip Flops using the gr- the uh, code Dangerous Grounds, all lowercase, all spelled out as one word. Dangerous Grounds will net you a 20% discount on their website at CombatFlipFlops.com. Just want to give a, a quick shout to uh, Vinny Rock Podcast. A lot of love for uh, Vincent Rocco Vargas. If you're not following him on iTunes and all the, the top platforms for uh, for podcasts, you are missing out. Uh, the Vinny Rock Podcast. You can find him anywhere. Just type it in on your smartphone or ask Siri, and she will point you in the right direction. A veteran with tremendous momentum. Listeners, I want to bring you back to Chapter 9. Last week, uh, we walked through the post-holiday time interaction with uh, Dalton and Ava. Dalton finally gets the nerve to ask Ava onto a, on a proper date. And there's been a lot of buildup. Uh, the previous, uh, well, we did get to finally enjoy the first kiss. Um, Ava, as uh, the story has unfolded and shared with us, Captain Stenberg has really only known a military life. Uh, most of her adult life has been you know, in uniform, and she grew up in the service, like so many of us. Uh, I'm sure that many of my listeners tonight have the experience, or part of their story is that they got right out of high school and, and went straight into the service uh, at whatever age level uh, our perspective of reality and what we consider our reality or how things are or should be are all shaped by our experiences in uniform. Well, much like that is her reality, uh, Dalton has only known uh, being married uh, to the wife of his youth. Uh, His whole entire adult life, he's been married to one person. So he's been out of the loop when it comes to the dating game. And then when he tragically lost her uh, in the beginning of our story, he didn't jump into the dating game. He's completely avoided it uh, very intentionally. And for him to awkwardly navigate the seas of being attracted to someone, uh, feeling and reciprocating that attraction uh, with another, and then figuring out how to go forward. It's, It's an awkwardness that many of us are familiar with. And if we're not, We know somebody very close to us that's probably confided in us with that frustration. And so that's what we see here in chapter 9. Ava consults her good friend, uh, Huma, on what exactly to wear. So, again, we have our westernized Muslim girlfriend, uh, the rebellious one uh, that is the vicarious channel through which Ava has a connection to the outside world or the real world or the the young life that she never uh, really took on for herself. We've got a uh, another shameless plug within the context for Rockwell Watches. Rockwell Time is a fantastic supporter of the veteran community and uh, they make some phenomenal timepieces and they are referenced again in the text here. Uh, condition 1 found its way into the pages of Chapter 9, uh, another veteran-owned business out of New York. Uh, Matt DeMeo, you can check out his website, www.gocondition1.com, and you can get a fresh 
baked to order batch of a food bar with real food ingredients. Uh, this is from a Marine that's lived uh, life downrange and knows the battle of bringing a protein bar and uh, another source of carbohydrates in other bars, Nutri-Green bars or something like that. He knows that life and so he went into the kitchen and created miracles in the form of deliciousness that uh, are for sale. Uh, you can order, you can have them freshly baked and then shipped to you directly. Uh, Matt DeMeo, again, Marine veteran entrepreneur and business owner, Condition One. So it's gocondition1.com. You can use the code uh, Patriot Fitness, I think, at this point, uh, or just send me a line on my email, doc at patriotheartpress.com, or you can find me on social media, Doc Collins on Facebook, Twitter at Real Doc Collins on Instagram at Patriot Heart Media. So we again have different pillars of business in Richmond uh, that they are navigating through uh, different coffee shops. We've got Lamplighter Coffee, Alchemy Coffee. Um, it was just so great to f have fallen in love with the city of Richmond, Virginia. If you're not familiar with the Mid-Atlantic, uh, right now is just a gorgeous time of year. And I would encourage you in your future plans for travel to incorporate some trip through Virginia. Growing up in Williamsburg, Virginia, where it all began, uh, I'm biased to that. And it was definitely inspirational in the uh, forming of this story. So chapter nine uh, brought us to the point of actually enjoying the uh, next steps in the relationship. And I would love to share with you tonight, chapter 10. Throughout the Mid-Atlantic, the warm weather had stolen the headlines and certainly led to a slew of cancellations at the physical therapy clinic. The one appointment that was certain not to end as a no-show was Tuesday afternoon at 1300 hours. Dalton only had a one appointment after Ava's that canceled with the receptionist while the two were in the throes of their session. Sarah knocked on the pillar nearby where they were working with the Dynabands, like a mother checking on her children playing to alert him to the calendar change. With that, Dalton invited himself to follow her back to work at the hospital. At first, Ava protested, thinking that that would somehow be uncool or awkward, but then she remembered who he was. She had secretly fantasized about being on his arm in a little black dress and he in a tuxedo, but this would do. His intimidating Ford Raptor stalked slowly behind her Volkswagen toward the fourth level of the parking garage of the hospital. She backed into her spot with precision as he whipped his gnarly transport into an end, an end space with all the care of a Kid Rock concert. While he climbed out of the driver's side, he checked his hair and teeth in the oversized side view mirror jutting off of the frame. He walked straight to Ava like an off-the-clock runway model, which made Ava nervous. She froze where she stood. The material around the hook at the top of her Lululemon bag bunched in her grip as she looked on, her neck now beginning to bead with sweat. Dalton approached with intent and had her squirm a bit as he took her face in his hands and kissed her already parted lips. While their eyes were still closed, in the moment, his hand rested on top of the one holding the Lululemon bag. Her grip loosened with his touch and he took it from her like a schoolboy carrying the books of his playground crush. Lingering in the moment, their foreheads pressed into one another, she spoke softly, right this way. Without a word, he simply maintained eye contact with her until she turned to lead him through the automatic sliding doors of the corridor leading to the stairs and elevators. Dalton noticed the familiar scene of eyes brightening and smiling as he made his way through most any public place. His congenial response was a warm and welcoming smile of gratitude to each face that he could manage. Only seconds in did he realize that their countenances were connecting with Ava's, and not his own. The revelation that she was the celebrity here only made his smile grow. Dalton was most comfortable as a wingman and not the center of attention. 
unknowingly, he'd robbed himself of that very quality with his self-imposed seclusion, but recognized the feeling immediately. More than once, he'd been in the company of names and personalities that were much more recognizable both on and off the field. The worlds of sports and entertainment always seemed to coincide for him, but this woman was a nurse, being looked, like, looked at like she'd personally discovered the cure for cancer. Those few moments that the pair walked through the, the hallways of MCV, Ava's world had been reduced to slow motion, and she was reinforced as the beautiful person she once believed she could be. Every passerby had their eyes on them, and they could both feel it, for different reasons. About every third staff member would greet Ava by her first name, with the look of having been reunited with their favorite aunt on their birthday. One particularly short, overweight nurse she introduced to Dalton had grown up a huge baseball fanatic, and always had some article of clothing or memorabilia pointing to his love for the Seattle Mariners. Nurse Tapia's awestruck expression as Dalton shook his hand and patted his shoulder, told the story that Ava had more than made his day. Ava couldn't quit smiling as they made their way back to her office. She hung one strap of the purple fitness bag on the back of her chair, offering Dalton a place to take a seat. When she looked up from fastening the rose gold zipper on the side pocket, she found him sitting on the corner of her desk like he'd called her into his office. Nervously, she drummed on his left thigh, feeling the steely sinews beneath the taxed denim. Y you can't just sit there like that. What if someone sees you? I think everyone in the building knows we're here by now. Yes, well, this isn't the bullpen. We don't just sit wherever we like and spit sunflower seeds all over the floor. Oh, is, is that so? The, the bullpen, huh? Or whatever the name of that place is where you watch the game from on the sidelines. Oh, oh, the sidelines, right. Right, maybe the dugout, too. Okay, look, Mr. Smarty Pants, Mr. Baseball. Ava stole a giddy kiss before guiding this outside of his thigh off of the desk until he stood on his feet next to it. Another nurse stuck her head in immediately after a short knock that was more an announcement than a request for permission to enter. The woman yelped at the discovery of who Ava had in her office with her. Dalton interrupted her blank stare by extending his hand with a smile. Nice to meet you. I'm the Dalton Michelson, she interrupted. Well, I'm in fact Dalton Michelson. I dropped the from the front of the rest years ago, he quipped. Ava couldn't believe what she was seeing, as Nurse Crosby was often rude and bossy with everyone, no matter their role or station. And here, she was enamored with her company. It, it's nothing. I'll come back later. What? His mock innocence likely got him out of loads of trouble, she thought. Glancing over his right shoulder, she delivered a quick peck on his unprepared lips. Remind me to tell you why I owe you one for that later. Okay. Will do. Ava began tending to the business before her as Dalton looked on, admiring her. Several offers were made to procure coffee, tea, or nibbles before deciding to make his exit. I'm sorry, I've just got to get these knocked out or it'll never get finished. Then your girlfriend, Nurse Crosby, will be back once again when you're gone and she'll have it in for me. You're amazing. I'm glad you came to see where I work. Can you find your way out of here okay? He smiled, kissed her forehead followed by flashing her a trigger finger with a wink. For as beautiful as he was to her, and everybody else, she was certainly glad he hadn't lost his cheesiness. Otherwise, she feared, she would never stand a chance with this man. Dalton had considered reservations for them at the Roosevelt in hopes of impressing her, before he reconsidered his company. Instead, he settled on the Black Sheep, down Marshall Street. The more veggie-friendly fare on their menu made for a more appropriate destination. Starting the uh, evening at Seco Wine Bar would allow for good conversation and to share their mutual appreciation for worldwide taste. Depending on how their energy was, he was prepared to shoot over to Signe Irish Pub to watch uh, a set by Shamrocks and Shenanigans. His entire outfit, from shoes and accessories to slacks, and his new Burberry shirt was laid out. He played the rose gold Rockwell off of the belt buckle and liked that work.